Yes. You feeling good? Much better. Back to normal. Although we had a big weekend here, working and cleaning up, packing up, getting ready for the big move. Yes, we did. First, let's tell you about some of the other things that we have done. Yes. So, last week, we went to Social Security. And we took a number you have to check in and you're a number and you're in line and whenever they get to you they get to you so we got there it opened at nine we got there at nine o'clock and there were already people lined up in the door so we weren't sure how this was going to work and for those of you who were questioning well why did we go to social security we had heard a while back uh, that we could go to Social Security and ask to pause our Part B Medicare deduction, right. which is currently it's $178 a month. And as you probably know, or if you didn't know, I'm going to share with you now, uh, you cannot use Medicare anywhere outside of the United outside States. Outside the United States. Unless it's an emergency. So routinely, if you're paying for your Part B hospitalization coverage, you have no coverage unless you come back to the United States. Right. So we decided why pay $178 a month each of us for something that we can't use in France at all. Right. We had to, in order to get our long stay visa, we had to purchase one year international health policy to cover us for hospitalization, emergencies, things like that. Right. So the $178 that we were having deducted from our social security check, that was just sort of useless. It was right. just giving it to the United States government. Why? So we did not have an appointment at social security. Um, by the time we realized that, hey, we need to do this, it was too late, I think, to make an appointment. So we decided to just go to our local social security office. And as Jeff said, we took a number, you go to a little computer, you check in, we got a number. And you checked on what day of the week was the less crowded at social security. Yes, they said that typically at social security offices, Wednesday through Friday are the least busiest days to go. If you go first thing in the morning, if you get there before 10 o'clock, right. chances are you won't have to wait too long. If you go on Monday, that's the busiest day of the week. So if you decide you're gonna go and do this, don't go on Monday. Plan so, accordingly. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, when we finally met with the person, the representative there, we actually went together. We each had our own number. Right. And then I noted that some other people were together doing things as a group yep. and the security guard said to them you really only need one number if you're together so when they called my number i said to him let's let's go together right. so we told the, the representative what we wanted to do and we said we wanted to pause he said there is no such thing as pause it's either you either have that deduction or you don't have right. the deduction well so how did it go in there 
Well, Jeff, as you know, we learned that there is no such thing as pausing our Part B Medicare deduction. Really? You either have it or you don't have it. Okay. So, obviously, it's $178 a month. If we're moving to France and you can't use your Part B coverage in France, why pay it? So, we have both opted to stop the payment. Just, that's it. It's not called pausing it, even though uh, someone else had told me they paused their payment. We were told there's no such thing as pausing. You just stop it. Okay. So we have paused it. It takes effect now. This is the end of March when I'm shooting this. Um, this will take effect at the end of next month, which is exactly what we want. We wanted it to start May 1st, no more deductions. So that's the way it's going to be. And they have you fill out some paperwork. Basically, <clears throat> you put on your name. Uh, social security number, the reason you're terminating your coverage, put your name, address, and today's date, and they put it into the system, and it's done. So, the bad news is that if we ever come back to the United States and decide that we want to add it in, there is a 10% penalty added to our monthly deduction for every 12 month period that we've been out of the United States. It is what it is. We don't plan to come back, so. Say la vie. Say la vie. All right, it's done. Another thing, checked off the list. So, so well, the bottom line is we didn't want to pay the $178 so it will be effective May 1st. Which worked out well. Which is exactly what we wanted because we'll still be in the United States for a few days in April. Right. And who knows, you know, just in case you need it, we'll have it. Based on what I've heard of the health system in France, particularly in cities where there are lots of doctors and good hospitals, I, th I don't think we have to worry about having to come back to the United States for health care. I think we're going to have the best health care there is. The World Health Organization rates France as the number one health care system in the world. Number one national health care system. Exactly. The U.S. is number 37. So, I mean, there's the difference. So why come back to the United States? Right. So, we took care of the Social Security. Check. Another thing off our list. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be a little all over the place here because these are things that are coming to mind. So I think I told you, or maybe I didn't in a last video, that when we were in Nice a few weeks ago, we signed up for internet yep. with a company called Free, F-R-E-E. -E. Not because it is free, it's just that's the name that's of the That's the company. name in France. So we signed up for the, the plan and we tentatively made a plan to have it installed a couple of days after we returned to Nice next week. Right. Well, they didn't tell us that they were going to send us a box, cable box. Some equipment. Right, and that we were going to go and have to pick up the equipment. Well, that's not the biggest issue. The big issue is they, they don't drop it off at your house or your apartment. They don't leave it in your mailbox. They don't leave it outside your door. I got an email saying that it was dropped off at like a sort of a mail substation. It wasn't the post office, yeah. but it's like another place where they drop off mail in our, in our neighborhood. Right. And so it said that you have to go get it. And you have to go get it by, in our case, we had to pick it up by the 21st of March. Well, here we are in the United States, can't so, go get it. Now, even if we knew somebody in France and asked them to go get it, they can't go get it without an original copy of either our resident card or our passport. So I couldn't even call somebody. I mean, we, we did work with Adrian Leeds people to find our apartment. I couldn't call one of her people and say, hey, can you run over and pick that up for us? and sign our power of attorney. No, nope. they have to show up with their identification and our original identification to pick it up for us. So, so 
we'll just have to reschedule the installation and we'll have to Start reschedule the equipment being sent to us All when over. we go back. Exactly. So keep that in mind when you get over there, when you make the appointment for the internet, shortly after they're going to send you a box so make sure you're, you're going to be pick it up. yeah that you're going to be in france to pick up the box so that was a disappointment so it's going to take us a little while to get internet once we get there hopefully not too long right uh, okay so we talked about the internet we talked about going to social security okay so then we've been packing here as jeff said Yep. And we got to the point where Jeff had to like pitch in and help now because I've been packing a lot of the inside of the house. Right. And Jeff's job was the garage. So take a look at this. So we're coming to the end of our cleanup. The garage is getting empty. Jeff got this giant dumpster so that we could put everything we didn't want in the dumpster. And there it is. So when the dumpster arrived, I got the comment, why did you get such a big dumpster? And I guess the answer is, because we had so much stuff to throw away. Someday, We'll be sitting in Nice at a cafe with a glass of wine, laughing about these days. Jeff, you got your dumpster. So what happened was, over the years, we had used the garage as a basement. We had stored all <laughs> kinds of things there to the point it was a two-car garage and we had a problem getting one car into the garage. But we did get one car. In. We did. We always kept one car, but it's a two-car garage, which meant there was a whole bunch of other treasures that we had stored in the garage. So we weeded out, we weeded out the best we could, sold most of the stuff to racks and shelves and stuff like that to other people. And then it came down to the last stuff that just had to be thrown out. So I ordered a dumpster which was a six yard dumpster. They put it in the driveway. And you're, you're looking at this dumpster now. Yes. <laughs> and it was, when it first arrived, we thought, oh my God, that's giant. We'll never fill that up. So over the weekend for two days, things came out of the garage, went into the dumpster, into the dumpster. And at the end, we had filled the dumpster all the way up to the top. So. Um, were allowed 2,000 pounds of junk. Well, we were 2,600 pounds of junk wow. in our dumpster. <laughs> so we, at the end of it, they took it to the landfill. We got a bill for $27 for the extra 600 pounds of junk that we threw away. But most of it was so big, it was hard to get it into normal trash. The dumpster let us in two days pretty much do months worth of trash disposal. And believe it or not, we still have stuff to get rid of. We do, but the bulk of it now is out of the garage. And surprisingly, it's a very big two-car garage now. No, <laughs> not that all of our junk is out of there. Yeah, so, and I think I had mentioned that I've been selling our things on Facebook Marketplace. Craigslist, and then there is another site called Nextdoor, right. which is sort of local to this area, although I think there are other communities in the United States yeah. that hook in with Nextdoor. Right. So we've been selling things, and it, it was fairly slow, although on the weekend things picked up, I guess on Saturday and Sunday, right. I was putting last call on the postings, yep. and so we did have, I don't know, five or six people came and bought some things. Plus, as he was finding things in the garage that we thought we could get some money for, right. I would quickly take pictures and I'd post them. And then within an hour or two, people would come and buy those things. Right. We still have a few pieces of furniture that we have to get rid of. And we think that probably uh, I'm going to end up having a call. There is a local charity I'm going to have to call. They're 
St. Matthews. Or, right, St. Matthews. Their pickup house. service to come in. Right, they'll take. send a truck and they'll pick up the furniture. Right. We also have our two televisions, which is kind of disappointing that nobody wants them yet, but on the good side, we get to watch them for a little longer. So but we may have to donate them. Right. And then we'll, we'll schedule that for like one of the last days we're here. Right. So uh, the mover. That's the next thing we should talk about. Yep. We did find a mover and we locked in a date for them to come and pick up our boxes. Now, you know, we're recording this on a Monday night and our mover is coming on Wednesday night. So by the time you're seeing this video, the boxes will have all been picked up. There goes all of our stuff on the way to the Port of Miami, eventually. Bye stuff, see you in Nice. Now the movers boxes, those things are all gonna go by ship. And I guess we've got probably about 45 boxes right. of varying sizes and most of it's not huge boxes we packed it in like medium UPS boxes right. so the mover will come and pick up these things now it will sit in the movers warehouse until a ship is ready to sail until and they've got a container worth of material so it might be us and other people in the container to fill a container up Exactly. Plus, they have to wait until the ship or a ship, I don't know how that all works, but they said that it'll sit in their warehouse until they receive notification that a ship is going to be sailing and then they'll add our stuff to a container with all of their other client stuff. Right. Now, um, one thing that I found very interesting was we packed according to the rules and when you pack, you can't bring anything, any chemicals. For example, I, we could not pack any um, beauty things, like no uh, cleaning fluid, no moisturizers, no- Makeup things. No makeup. They didn't even want us shipping soap. Anything that is a chemical, uh, I guess they could catch fire on the boat. So we didn't, we, couldn't pack any of that stuff. Right. Couldn't right. pack any makeup in the boxes. So that kind of stuff can't go. So it's, most of what we packed was we packed kitchens, plates and dishes and clothing um, and then miscellaneous odds and ends. But basically everything was sort of bubble wrapped and put into a cardboard box ready to be shipped. Right. It, we did end up boxing up more things than we thought we were gonna ship. That sometimes, you know, when you start packing and you realize, wait a minute, these are all photos that I've collected for all these years. Can, right. I, can I really part with these things? Do I really just want to turn around and dump them into the trash? Well, in some cases I actually did, but in other cases, I just, I couldn't. Right. I started thinking back to when my mother was, um, my mother was ill and she was in assisted living and then she got to the point where she had to move into skilled nursing and anything that she had with her in her assisted living room right. apartment, I had to go and get. And I kept it in a storage unit for a while and then it got to the point where when she went into skilled nursing, she had, she had Alzheimer's and it was advancing and she really wasn't real sharp and rather than continuing to pay a storage unit bill i ended up having to sell what was left of her things what was left of her furniture and, right. and i i still remember standing at a dumpster i used to have this little cart it was like a little cart on wheels and i would fill it she had hundreds of photo albums and i would take these photo albums in this cart to the dumpster in the apartment complex that I was living in, and I would stand at the, the dumpster and I'd flip through, flip the, through the, albums. the albums, looking at the pictures to just see if there was anything that 
I wanted to keep. And a lot of these were pictures of things that my dad and she had done, vacations they took together without us kids. Right. And then after my dad died, it was my stepfather and, and my mom, vacations they had taken and friends, people that I didn't even know. And so it sort of made it easier for me to just take those things, flip through and say, oh, I don't know these people and Move. put the, the albums in the dumpster. And I can right. still remember the thud into an <laughs> empty dumpster. And she had, I probably stood there for an entire afternoon making trips back and forth from my apartment right. to the dumpster, just taking these albums and throwing them into a dumpster. And so as I sat here in our house, looking at the, the few boxes that Jeff bought it, brought in from the garage and right. pictures that I had collected. I mean, there was one album of just didn't have a lot of pictures in it, but it was all the notes from my son going to the doctor, the pediatrician as a baby. Yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, how can I just throw this away? Well, I took the notes out of there and tossed the album because I hadn't written anything in the book. Yeah. Um, but there were all of these other albums and I had to literally go through them and decide, can I live without this? Is it gonna break my heart if I have to throw this away? So, I mean, for an example, one of the easier ones was, there was a wedding album from my last marriage, not to Jeff, my last marriage, and it was this you know, beautiful wedding album of all these pictures. And I kind of thought about just pulling out the pictures that were just me. And then I thought, okay, well, I tried to get, there was one of me <laughs> in my wedding gown, and I actually loved that gown. And I just wanted that picture. Well, the way the album was assembled, the picture wouldn't come out. So I ended up, I just tossed the album in the dumpster that was out in the, yeah. in the driveway. And there are other pictures like that from my past marriage and pictures that I thought, well, I can live without these. Right. I did find an album of my very first trip to France and I flipped through it and there were a lot of pictures of just things I had seen and I was in the pictures and those pictures, I really didn't feel that I was ready to say goodbye to those because that first trip to France was important to me. It sort of got me started on falling in love with France. Yes. So I did bring that album back in the house. But it's very hard when you're trying to get rid of as much as you can of the material things you've collected all your life and you get to the photos. The photographs, I mean, it is really difficult. I see Bella came back to visit us. And what we're doing is we're moving from a house that's 1,500 square feet into an apartment that's about 700 square feet. Right. So we're moving to less than half of the floor area that we have. Right. So we, we have to sort of pare down to the minimums as we take stuff and move. Right. Now. I suspect that once we get to France and we get settled, we're gonna end up getting a printer and a scanner anyway. Right. And my plan is to go through the, the pictures that I've decided to hang on to. And scan And then them. just start scanning them into... Digital format. Exactly. Yeah. And then I can let go of the, the paper copies right. and be done with that. Yeah. So, that, that was one of the things that was really hard to go through and just let go of. Um, so anyway, I got over that. I'm still looking, there are like three small boxes in front of me on the floor that you can't see that I've got a box up tomorrow. Right. So anyway, the mover uh, will come and they will take all of the boxes in a couple of days. And we have these other boxes. Now these are things that the mover won't take, for example, I have all my makeup and toiletries from the bathroom. Right. I didn't want to just throw those things away. I used those things. And anything you throw away, you have, you to, have, to, you have to buy it again. Exactly. You have to buy them again. And then there, there are a couple of boxes of files. I didn't want to send them with a mover and not see them for tw possibly 12 weeks, three months. Right. So those boxes, actually one of them may go with the mover, but the one that has the most important things that we have to hang on to, 
that we're going to send with sendmybag.com. Send right. And if, if you go back to my old videos, I did a video on different ways to ship things to France. Right. And I determined that send my bag was probably the least expensive and easiest way to do it. To get things fast. there quickly. Right. So we'll contact send my bag. I had gone on their website and they only really need uh, a couple days notice to come and pick up your packages or your boxes. Your boxes. They can take boxes and they can take suitcases. So I may, we've got some extra suitcases around here that aren't being used. I may transfer some of the things into a suitcase because I think it's actually less expensive to send, send a suitcase, suitcase yeah. than it is to send the box. Right. So that's yet to be determined. Next week, right before we leave, I'll have Send My Bag come and take those last things. Right. With Send My Bag, you pretty much you have to be on your way to the place, the destination, because Send My Bag will get your packages, your box or your luggage to the destination in three or four days. So I figured I'll have them come the day before we leave so that by the time the boxes get to France, we'll already be, be at the apartment to, to receive, receive them. them. Right. So that's how we're taking care of that. Um, let's see, what else did we do? Oh, Bella today, Bella went to visit the vet. So now if you watched my video from a few months ago, I don't know, maybe six months ago, I did a video on how to take your dog or your cat to, to France. To France, right, exactly. And at the time, we weren't sure if we were going to take the ship over or we were going to fly over. And subsequently, we decided we're just going to fly. It's a lot easier. Plus, it was going to get too complicated with getting Bella into the UK and then having to drive from the UK all the way to France. Yep. Um, plus, they don't, I had read that they don't let dogs on the Eurostar. That's correct. Right. Unless it's a, um, what do you call it? A working, a, uh, support service, a, no, a support dog or service yeah. dog. Yeah. Well, she's not a service dog. So right. if we just thought, you know, it, this is just going to get too complicated just to try and get to Nice. And it was far easier to just book airline tickets and book a ticket for her. So she right. has her ticket. Yep. So the way it worked is I took her to the vet today. So today is Bella's vet day. It's 10 days before her little feet touch French soil. And so she is required to come to the vet for her exam and make sure she's all up to date in shots and for them to do the paperwork. So we have just been inside and everything checked out. Now we have to come back when they get the papers back. They completed forms. They will send them to the USDA. We should have them back towards the end of the week and then we will have to come back, grab the forms, and we will bring them with us so that Bella can get into France. Um, the dog has to have had a three-year rabies shot. Now, the vet was trying to convince me that it was okay that Bella's rabies shot still hadn't expired. She had it almost three years ago. It wasn't going to expire until June. And she said, you know, they just want to see that she had a three-year rabies shot. If you want to, I'll give you one a couple months early, but technically she's had it. Well, I didn't want to run into any problem in France. So I had them give her her three year, another three year, the one that she right. would have gotten in June. I had them give that to her today. So then they complete all this documentation and they need, you know, your name, the, per the name of the, the person who is flying with the dog. So because she's part of my airline ticket, 
They needed my full name the way it appears on my passport. They needed the destination address where we're going to be living in France. And they needed my France telephone number. So I gave that all to the vet for their paperwork. Right. And then all of this is sent up to the USDA. So the USDA will give their stamp of approval on the paperwork. Now, the vet overnighted it to the USDA today so that the USDA will have it tomorrow. And then they say that the USDA re requires 24 to 48 hour turnaround. And typically they do get them turned around within 24 hours. Right. So then the USDA overnights it back to the vet and then we will go back to the vet and pick up the documentation. So we can't get on the plane with Bella until we have that documentation. Yeah. Paperwork. To show, we're, we're flying Lufthansa, so we need to be able to show that at the Lufthansa counter when we check in. Now, as far as Bella's ticket, uh, the ticket broker that I used to get the tickets got a price of between $125 and $350 depending on the weight of Bella and her carrier. So Bella is actually almost six pounds. That's how much she weighed today, which is, so she so gained far. a pound. Yes. It's all those cookies you keep giving her. Could be. Uh, so between her weight and the little carrier that she's riding in, uh, I'm sure it's probably gonna be at the lower end of that because she's just a little doggy. Right. So then the other question that some people had was, well, what are you gonna do about keeping her calm? So the vet told me that there were multiple options. The first one she told me about was this spray. And she said, you spray it in the dog's carrier before you get on a plane. She said, don't spray it in the plane. So you spray the carrier, like all of the cushion, pillows, whatever you've got in that carrier, and it's a calming fragrance or something. She said it's like pheromones. Um, I, that just didn't sound like enough to me. I asked her how long it lasts, and she said it lasts about two or three hours. And so I said, well, this is great because our first flight is nine hours. So after two or three hours, then the dog, if it did, does work, right. then the dog won't be calm anymore and right. she'll just be her normal self. And we don't know what that is. On because, a plane, yeah. Right, because we've never taken her on a plane. So, and you can't like respray on the plane. Right. So we decided, okay, that's not gonna work. So what she did give me uh, was a little, I guess, kind of like a calming pill. Right. And you have to use a quarter of the calming pill. So you take the pill and you, because of the size of the dog, you break it into a quarter of a, of a tip pill. Well, I'm going to have to cut these before we leave. It's called trazodone. So the vet said to give these to Bella, give a quarter of one to Bella, two hours, she suggested. Before the plane. Two Before hours. Well, it looks like it's about the size of an aspirin. Yeah. So she said give her a quarter, about two hours before she gets on the plane. Um, because my concern was that when we put her in the carrier and close it all up in, as we get to the airport, she's gonna have to stay in that carrier and she's not gonna be happy. Right. So probably when we're on the way to the airport or maybe just before we get in the car to go to the airport, we'll give Bella the pill right. so that when we get to the airport and put her in her carrier, she'll already sort of be Mellowed relaxed, out. chill out, and not yeah. care. Um, now the pills, last around, I think she said seven or eight hours, which is good. Right. No, no. Six hours. Six, around six hours. And so after six hours, she'll start to come out of it. And then the vet said, now we, we have a layover in Frankfurt, I think for about eight hours. So the vet said, when you get to Frankfurt, take her out of carrier. Exercise her. 
Try to find in the Frankfurt airport, try to find one of the doggy comfort stations. There must be one. Right. And she said, try to get her to drink some water, try to get her to pee. And then, depending on how long your next flight is or how she's acting, right. either give her another quarter or don't. She right. said, you know, if your next flight is like two and a half, three hours, you may not feel like you need to give it to her. And she may be settled to being on a plane, so it might not be so traumatic, the second part. Right. She said, you know, for the most part, dogs don't know the difference in riding in a car or a plane. Right. So she's, she's not going to, like, be off the wall about the vehicle motion. Right. The only thing that I think Bella may be upset about is being confined in a carrier because she's never been confined. We will update you after our trip and let you know just how it all played out. <laughs> so there we are with that. Now, is there anything else that we have done? We said goodbye to this cute little Mazda Miata. We had bought the car after our sport utility was damaged in the last hurricane. And I drove that car up onto the ramp. that's pretty much the update for now it is now you're seeing this on Sunday I can tell you that the following Sunday next Sunday there's probably not going to be another video from us because as I mentioned we're not gonna have internet and I need to edit my videos using internet right and we will have just gotten to meet so we won't see you next Sunday, but we will do our best to get internet somewhere and try to give you another update from Nice. So the next update will be from Nice. Exactly. Yeah. Even if it maybe it's just a little mini video that I upload to um, my Facebook group, Postcards from My Golden Years. Okay. So, so we will try to give you a little updates maybe i'll upload them to instagram so if you're not following us yet on instagram look us up postcards from my golden years on instagram yep join our facebook page we may upload some little snippet videos on there and as soon as we get internet and we're able to shoot some more video and start our weekly vlog from nice you will see us there so, thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye for now.